everybody in this video I am going to paint this scene two different ways one more structured and um, a little bit tighter and the other one in my more typical style which is a lot more loose but before we get to that I want to tell you about uh, the next video that I'm going to be filming and a new series I am starting so I'm going to be starting a new series called what in the world Friday as in what in the world is Janelle doing today because um, the plan is to have videos uploaded every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so Fridays, Monday is Mixed Media Monday, Wednesday is Watercolor Wednesday, and Friday, I don't know what to do it, so I just was like, what in the world am I going to call it? Well, I'm going to call it What in the World Friday. It's kind of lame, um, so it's just a mixture of everything. And um, this is where I kind of include my fun, weird things. So I saw this a while ago in like Winners, Home Sense, anyways, and it's, <laughs> it's Paint Your Own Masterpiece. So I've seen some different ones like this, and I just thought it might be kind of fun to try them. I'm very interested to see how this is going to work, and if it's, you know, if the concept actually is a good concept and works. Um, so... I'm going to I'm going to paint this and I'm going to do a video of it. I'll let you know all about that um on the next video which is tomorrow. Uh and I'll try to get it uploaded. It may not get uploaded tomorrow. It might get uploaded more like um a couple days after that depends on how the editing goes. And later on in this video, I am going to talk to you about the giveaway of 10,000 subscribers, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get started on today's video. All right, so here are some of the brushes I will be using, and they are just a mixture of flat brushes, angled brushes, um, just my watercolor brushes that you've seen in other videos. Uh, Mimic is one that I really like using, and my silver black oval. This is my watercolor palette. It's mostly Daniel Smith, and I've talked about it before in other videos, so I don't really need to go over it again, but I just have a palette of my favorite watercolor pans and uh, they are mostly Daniel Smith and that is pretty much all the paints I'm using and so I'm gonna start with the sky and this is I always start even with acrylic um, and watercolor I always start kind of with a cerulean it's just kind of a good sky pigment to start with and then I kind of go from there and we'll make it a little bit more turquoise or a little bit more stormy and I just kind of put in different shades from there but I, I always seem to start with cerulean whether I'm doing watercolor or um, acrylic and then here is just the waterline and it is ultramarine blue I believe that's what I used and I wanted it to be kind of uh, you know, you can see in the picture that I have there in the bottom right, you can kind of see that it's uh, a little bit more intense, more vivid at the horizon line. So I wanted to show that as much as I could. And I'm just kind of washing that out because I don't want it to be too hard of a line. And I'm, oh, I'm using the flat mimic brush actually here. Um, I didn't show that at the beginning, so I decided to, it's just a wash brush. And I actually have only painted this scene kind of as a silhouette, like with the palm trees black. So this is, um, I've never painted this picture before, but I've painted a similar scene. And actually it was from a different trip to Maui. And I think I showed it on one of my videos. I don't think I painted it on YouTube or on a video. But um, I, I show it somewhere in an older video. But I do have a jelly plate uh, one kind of of a scene similar to this, a jelly plate print that I did. So I'll put the link up there. Um, so now I'm just showing that turquoise. I think it's a sandbar out there. It looks like it might be from the a boat on the picture, but it's I believe it's from a sandbar. And I just kind of I wanted to show as much of the picture as I could. Um, try to make it as representational as possible. I had to change up some of the composition because the palm trees don't really work. I mean, it's fine for a photograph. Um, some things that work in a photograph 
and definitely some things that work in real life don't work in a painting. And so I changed the composition up a little bit and you'll be able to see that. And I, uh, I've only painted the ocean with the palm trees. Yeah. As a silhouette, I've never done like a daylight theme. Like it's always been like a sunset and then, and then the palm trees are all kind of just black. So it's been a little bit easier. Um, and so as I was painting this, I was like, I've never actually, um, done palm trees like this before. <laughs> just strange. And so this is again, some ultramarine blue in the, in the very top. I just wanted the sky to be a little bit more intense at the top and it kind of lightens as it goes down, at least in the photograph it does. So I was just going to use that. Um, but it does in real life too. Like the sky kind of lightens up. And then um, for the clouds, I just kind of keep it white for the most part and just use some crumpled up paper towel or Kleenex just to put some texture in there to show clouds. And I'm just kind of working with the different shades of blue. That's really all I'm doing. And so um, as I am working here, you can just kind of see that. But uh, I do want to mention the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. It sounds like I'm giving away 10,000 subscribers when I describe that. <laughs> um, the giveaway I'm having for reaching 10,000 subscribers. So it is coming. I'm going to show you later on in this video the prize and stuff for it. But there is a video that I did and you can watch that. And I'll include the link. Uh, you can click on it on the eye there on the top right. But it will come across the screen uh, later on. And uh, so that I'm letting that first painting uh, just dry because I don't want to go into it with the palm trees there. I don't want to mess that up. And now I'm using my bamboo brush, which kind of forces it's it's kind of a great brush. Like I had it for a long time. I had bamboo brushes for a long time and did not use them because I couldn't find a way to <laughs> do anything with them. <laughs> Nothing I did worked. And then I realized that they work really well for just no like just loosening you up. And I don't think I'm I'm actually not sure, but I don't think that's the purpose of them. I think they're there's a specific way to use them and maybe I'll have to look into that but uh, that's how they work really well for me so um, they're just because they don't really work any other way like I don't so I just I just use them to uh, paint really loosely and I have to say it was kind of weird to go back and forth like I had to switch my brain from like okay I'm I'm planning this out I'm, I'm gonna think very carefully here about where I'm what I'm putting where to this and then all of a sudden it was just like just start so I had a little bit of an adjustment and then I finally just started like throwing paint down on the canvas because I was like I've got to I've got to really make my brain switch over to the other way of thinking and so I just started you know just throwing whatever rather than being so precise like I was in the previous painting and the reason why I'm including this in two of the same videos is just so that you can see the difference in approaches between a more structured painting and I mean not that that's a super technical structured painting it's not like the first way is a really difficult way it's just a different approach um, so I'm using opera pink here and um, what's the other one? Oh, just to, um, it is a cobalt teal blue and they're both from down okay. Smith. Oh, we are going to just take a quick little break and let you know what the giveaway is and uh, I'm gonna be adding some things to this. Some things I literally added in here like an hour ago. I went out and got things specifically for this giveaway. Hello. And if you don't know about the giveaway, it is my uh, 10,000 subscriber giveaway. I am getting kind of close to reaching it. Well, yes, I'm getting close to reaching 10,000 subscribers, so I'm going to do a big giveaway. Make sure you click on this link up here to find out all about it because there are certain things you need to watch and comment and blah, blah, blah. So let's take a look. This box will not be included in the giveaway. Just a little disclaimer. This is just my giveaway box and whenever I find cool things out and about, I uh, stick it in here. So um, we've got a bunch of little things and I am going to be adding some things in here. And so one of these, it'll be one of these, I don't know which one. And I might stick some fun things in there. So. I just got these. These were super cute. And I was like, oh, I want these. And then I was like, oh, I should put them in the giveaway. 
Uh, these are some sponge things uh, for palette. I really want to include a thing of the palette pastels from Jane Davenport in here because it is one of my favorite items. So basically this is a giveaway of like some of my favorite things. Um, so these are just, these are makeup sponges, but they work really good <laughs> for mixed media art. This is a whole set of painting and I just did a kind of review painting with this. So you can check out that link there. And um, there's a bunch of washi tape in here. Oh, these are little charms I just picked up. They're super cute. Um, I had to include them in here because they're super cute. And I bought some for myself. And I'm going to put them on something. So I'm going to try to like use all of this. Not this, but the versions I have of this stuff. Because I have all this stuff as well. Because it's my favorite thing. So of course I have it. And uh, I'll be doing some videos to show you what is what and also um so you do want to be subscribed to me and click the notification bell so you do see these so one thing i'm including which this has become my favorite thing is a butterfly journal and i have mine right here and seriously you can put so much stuff in here at first i was like what is this like i don't know i don't understand the concept well i kind of understood it but i just didn't see the point well we'll be going over it it's awesome so this goes in there. This is like a travel accessory pouch. You can stick lots of different things in there. Um, this is some um, stamps. This is a stencil and a washi tape holder. I'll explain all that in a subsequent video. This is watercolor papers that go inside of that. And I might be adding some more fun things to this because this is just so much fun to just keep adding things to. Plus you can put little charms on here. Like I could put a little charm on there. Oh my goodness, so exciting. And we've got some mermaid markers. This whole set, which is brand new, unopened and all sealed up for you guys. So this is just the first things I've got in here. So hello. It's going to be awesome. So you want to definitely keep in uh, touch with all of this stuff. In touch? Does that make sense? You want to keep up to date with what's going on with that. And make sure that you are um, got everything under control with how you need to enter. <laughs> I'm describing things in a really weird way. Um, but yeah, make sure that you keep updated on everything. And uh, when I reach 10,000 subscribers, I am going to pick... Oh, uh, let's continue on and find out how um, these watercolor paintings are turning out. All right, so we are back with this one. And now I just want to add a little bit of color in for the clouds to show that they are a little, so sh to show that they are clouds and to show just a little bit of them kind of building up. They're just, they're just there in the, in the background. They're not threatening. They're not storm clouds. They could turn into something and it might rain sometime during the day but you know they're just those clouds that are always kind of out there and uh, so I'm using lavender because uh, I, fe I felt like they looked a little bit purpley so I'm using lavender from Daniel Smith and uh, right now I just kind of want to just put them there I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything more with that or not uh, build them up um, I just wanted something there to show that there was a cloud. So I'm going to leave the top of that pretty white and uh, kind of see how they dry and figure out how they dry. And then I'll work on them after that. So I, uh, the palm trees are a little bit different color. The tree trunks, are they called tree trunks for palm trees? I don't know. I live in Northern Canada, so <laughs> I see palm trees like when I go on vacation but um I, I assume they're called tree trunks because they're trees right anyways so they're different colors and I wasn't sure what to do that so I started with quinacridone gold uh just because it's the color I love and that didn't work so <laughs> and I wanted texture so I added in some Minnesota Pipestone Genuine from Daniel Smith and that gave some really good texture and then um I wanted more brown. I just keep <laughs> changing things because I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing. So I just kind of worked with it. So I went in with sepia or sepia and then hematite and hematite violet are awesome colors. So Daniel Smith has so many awesome granulating watercolors and they are especially uh, he has a line that are all like from minerals and like they're actual like 
elements that were crushed down to make the watercolors and they're so granulating and just so wonderful and then they look completely well not completely different but they look different when they dry and you can really see their full effect and unfortunately they don't come in the watercolor sticks um for those of you who are wondering daniel smith is like one of the top watercolor and he definitely like for pigments and stuff and so he um he has a he has all his like normal tube colors so like there's like I don't know, a couple hundred of them. And then he has watercolor sticks in like more of the common pigments. So the watercolor sticks are definitely more affordable. The only one that I found I didn't like the stick for and I preferred the tube was the opera pink, uh, which we're using on the other painting actually. But all the other sticks work really good. They're basically just like dried like pans of watercolor. So if you wanted to try out Daniel Smith, go for the watercolor sticks unless you're doing opera pink, just go for the tube. But let's get back to this. So uh, you can see that I changed up the composition. So that one tree that I put in first, I put it higher because in the photograph, it kind of ends right at the horizon line and they kind of are all sitting right at the same place almost. So I wanted to change that up because that just doesn't work in a painting and it doesn't work to end everything like right there on the same line. And then I didn't want to have a lot of parallel lines and I wasn't really paying attention to that till I had three and then I was going to put in the fourth one and I was like, wait a minute, I've already got three here. That's already too many. So I needed to put the fourth one kind of slanted in and I do actually have a picture that's kind of like with the palm tree slanted over, leaning over. And I was just hoping that once I put in the branches and stuff and the palms that, uh, are they called branches? <laughs> oh my word. Okay. Uh, just ignore me. Uh, the palm branches. Yes, they're called palm branches. Uh, I, th I figured once I put them in that hopefully they would kind of uh, just mix up the eye a little bit to see um, from seeing all those parallel lines. And I think I think I actually do like the end result. And yes, I know my paper keeps slipping down. Um, I usually don't tape my my watercolor paintings because I like to move them around, especially like my loose ones. And so only when I'm doing portrait do I usually tape them down. And because I don't usually do this, like, um, I don't usually tape this down for this kind of painting, so I didn't this time. And I mean, I know you can, so just for all of those who are wondering why I'm not, why I didn't tape it down, it's just because I, just didn't for this one and I didn't feel like I needed to and yes it is slipping but it's okay it's all right sometimes that's the way it is and next time probably for the video purposes I probably will tape it down but I just didn't think of it because it's not something I normally do I just wanted to just preempt some of the comments because I know that does bug some people when things like that happen like seeing the paper completely slip down all the time um, but usually I'm moving my my paper around a lot more um, so you can see how I'm using the brush actually, and you can just kind of see how I make them. So you just want to stick out some of these, uh, you see it, uh, the technique a lot more in the other painting where I just kind of do very loose painting and then I just put some of the branches there. This one I'm trying to be more technical and more precise. So that's what's going on. But I really like how the kind of aqua, aqua, turquoise uh, little strip of water there goes across. And um, now I'm thinking, I think this is about the point where I'm wondering, how do I paint the water? Because it just looks too smooth. It needs to look a little bit more watery. And I haven't painted water in a while. So I actually go back to some of my other paintings that I've done of Venice where it shows the water. So you'll see that coming up. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And now I'm just trying to put those ones behind, make them look like they're actually behind because they are quite a bit darker in the painting. So the greens I used are, of course, my favorite, Green Appetite Genuine. And I did go in with some Hooker's Green because I wanted to put some of that darker in there. But uh, I found that Indigo, as always, works the best for shadows in foliage. And Indigo is a color that I have on my should should have on my list of painting wow I can't talk on my list of pigments to get indigo you don't necessarily have to get Daniel Smith but indigo is always so great to put in with that foliage I just love it like I can't I couldn't do without it so anyways back to the greens I'm using green appetite genuine serpentine genuine um I did put in some green gold 
these are all from Daniel Smith actually. And I think that's pretty much it that I used for the greens. I might have, I, I did actually put in some Amazonite Genuine into the water to make that a little bit green. And the green that I used in the water, I put in some Thalo Turquoise and maybe some of that Cobalt Teal Blue, um, which is also used in the other painting. Uh, so you can see that green gold going going across there and I'm really kind of bringing that out and I actually am loving the effect. This is the quinacridone gold going in there right now, the, the really yellow, yellow ones. And oh, I just love how it hits the branches there. Like it's just awesome. And so I'm trying to get some little sunlight coming through there. Um, and I just take my quinacridone gold, which is always a good go-to color to add in sunlight. Um, I'm going to make a list of, you know, pigments that are just really great uh, to start with, especially for people that are like wanting some more expensive watercolors, but they don't know which pigments to start with, or just people that just want to know where there's good pigments to get. And I'm also seeing that I kind of have a dark line going kind of straight across, and I didn't see that till after the painting was done. And I'm noticing it again now while I'm editing it, but... Um, Eh, whatever I might I'll probably go in and switch that sometime someday because <laughs> uh, it's just looking like this line going straight through the palm trees that's weird but it's okay we're gonna deal with it and I am just trying to figure out what I'm doing now I'm trying to bring in that different color of green that is you can see in the bottom right and it's eh, it's not really working um, but now I am just going to add some ripples and stuff in the water and it kind of just looks like it makes the ocean look a little bit more angry than it is. Um, it looks a little bit, uh, aggressive because those are big, big ripples. And as you can see in the picture, they're just tiny little ripples, but you know what? It is what it is. So I've been kind of doing videos in this format for a little, uh, the, my last few videos like this have been done that way. Uh, these paintings take over an hour to do and I just feel like no one's going to watch a video that long, but I still want to do some like that in real time just because you do learn a lot more from it and you can see my thoughts as I'm doing it rather than narrating it later. Uh, but anyways, so I just, I'm going to continue with this format and do some um, like my Friday videos might be a little bit longer and just kind of more fun and weird. I don't know. Um, the the other video I did where I discussed the giveaway, um, it's just me talking to the camera, I wasn't painting, is definitely edited. Uh, I did some different kind of editing things because I've always feel like my personality doesn't come through very much on these paintings just because um, it like my channel doesn't really lend itself to being super whatever. But my personality is pretty sarcastic and I'm known as um, just a very sarcastic person and joking lots and it doesn't really come through on, video on my videos so I'm, I'm gonna do a few that are just edited a little bit more like that but not too much because I feel like a lot of my viewers would be like that is just ridiculous like please let's stop like a little bit of silliness is okay but you know keep it to a minimum uh, so I, I feel like I would drive a lot of you crazy if I did every single video like that. Plus, we're not all 12-year-old kids. But um, if you haven't watched that video, you can see I did do some different editing. And I'm just kind of wondering what people think of it. Because uh, it was like, eh, I don't know. But it was kind of fun for me. And I do like showing a little bit more of my personality. Not like this is, I'm not being fake or anything. It's just that... I'm really like I feel like I come across so serious because I'm kind of keeping my sarcasm and my uh, my humor a little bit on the down low so you know I don't know that is just random thoughts for today listening as we paint so here we are I have to switch my brain again back to uh, really loose um, but I can't go crazy because the problem with loose painting is once if you just start slapping colors down, it's fine for like a back back 
a background wash. I was going to say backyard wash. Yeah, it can look like a backyard wash uh, if you're not careful with colors. I have no idea what a backyard wash it would even look like. So just, again, uh, ignore me. But um, you do need to be a little bit careful because you need to pull out some of these. You need to make sure that even though you're doing a loose painting, you want to draw that loose that that water that's just puddling you want to form it into a shape rather than painting the shape you're kind of taking those puddles and and shaping them and moving them around um rather like with and they're a lot more watery and not so much pigment and I really want it to kind of like blend into the background and almost be like a two-toned effect I feel like you know, I'm not sure if maybe I should have done this on a completely different colored background because the color, the background uh, on this is a, is a little bit um, the same tones as the actual palm tree. Oh, and by the way, I am using a different wash because the other one just wasn't dry in time and I needed to get on with this video. So it's the same kind of idea. It's the same thing. I just wanted to show you that video of me doing that wash so that you can kind of see how I would do it. And um, this is the same idea, although I did put salt on this wash, so there is a little bit of granulation there. And I think lots of you have seen that in my other videos, so, you know, I didn't feel like it was super important to use the same background for my painting. Um, so now I want to add some of that cobalt teal because it just, we need some contrasting colors in there. And I feel like it can um, bring in some like depth to the piece so that's why I use different shading uh, like in the previous painting I did like indigo because you really want it to be depth otherwise it's just so flat you you want to be able to look through the tree um, the trees the foliage whatever it is you're painting flowers doesn't matter and so for this because it's a more abstract piece and it's just like no one's seen a purple palm tree like in real life right so um <laughs> I'm I'm just going with it, right? And that's the whole purpose of doing the two. Like I really wanted to make sure it was as extreme as possible. Although I'm I'm sure you could go even more extreme than what I did, but this is what I'm comfortable with. So that is what I'm using the cobalt for to give it depth and some more texture. Um and just some more fun, more fun colors. Cuz I love that cobalt and it looks awesome with these other pigments I'm using with these other shades I'm using. Um so now I am actually scrubbing out some holes to come through the trees because there are none there. <laughs> There's no white spots, which is fine, but I need them to be a little bit lighter. And so one way you can do that is by scrubbing out and you can go in with white paint. Um, although that can, that's sometimes it's, if you go in with acrylic or gouache or gesso or whatever on top of watercolor, it can get overdone really quickly, I find. And so I'm just scrubbing it out and a, a good way of doing it, especially in these loose watercolor paintings, is to form negative shapes and to get out to to paint out these these shapes that you kind of see and you also have to imagine and then paint around them with a darker shade, a darker value. So I show that and I do zoom in a little bit when I do that. So now that I've scrubbed those out, I'm kind of just brushing them like I'm almost like an airbrush effect, like just brushing them so they're not like hard shapes. And uh, some of the cobalt I've lost, so I need to just drop it in. You can see that this is a completely different effect than the first painting that I did. And uh, I'm, I kind of enjoy doing this. It's a little bit of an, a brain exercise to go back and forth. And one other thing I wanted to do was actually do the same painting. This wouldn't happen in the same sitting, but the same painting, the same image in different like watercolor and then acrylic and then like pastels and you know, all those different things like a mixed media version of it. So I'm going to be working on that. That that would be over a series of paintings. I wouldn't do that all in one painting. But here I am going in with some darker values and just kind of bringing out some of the uh, branches or some white spots, light spots, I should say, because they're not going to be white. But I really want to, even though this is a very different painting, I really want there to be some depth in these, um, and it's just the one tree in these branches. And so I'm, I'm going in with indigo, and then I also am using... Um, 
uh, Corbizol Violet, I believe. And I think another one I'm doing is Bordeaux. Like, honestly, I'm just kind of going all over the place. Um, Opera Pink is a main color in this one for sure. And then the Cobalt Teal Blue, which actually is what has mostly formed the purple shades that you see there. And then um, the mauve, um, I kind of go in to just bring out some of those negative shapes. And so you can see that. And I wanted to add in a little bit at the base of the branches there and just kind of form that because you really want to see some depth. If you don't have any difference in values, if everything is the same value, it's it's hard um, it's hard to, it, it's not, a, it doesn't come across, it just looks very flat and you don't see the, the texture, you don't see the shape really. Um, oh, one other thing. Oh yeah, so I really wanted some of that two-toned effect, but then in order to make that look really cool, like in the edges of the trees, those that two-toned effect, I needed some dark in the middle there. And here's just the close-up of the finished paintings. And make sure you join me on the next video, which will be up in a few days or possibly tomorrow, where I am going to paint the Mona Lisa.